I'm, I'm, I'm here quoting Aristotle, the guy that died maybe it's almost 2,500 years ago, and here he is saying the wisdom of the world. This is why the left tries to destroy our education, because the wisdom of the world is conservative. I'll tell you somebody, somebody else who said something important, Abraham Lincoln, who said the b- fastest way to get, the, the best way to get a bad law repealed is to enforce it strictly, and that is what is happening now. Have we got Jenna? Great. So yesterday, Trump uh, signed an executive order saying that uh, children can stay together, even though he re- says that he's going to still be strictly enforcing our immigration laws. So the, everybody is saying, oh, well, he's caved in. He turned around. Now they've got him on the run. But I am wondering whether he has actually uh, outsmarted the opposition on this. Do we, ha- do we have Jenna? OK, there she is. Hi, Jenna. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Thanks so much for having me back. Uh, Let me just remind people that you are the director of public policy for the James Dobson Family Institute, an accomplished constitutional law attorney uh, with also a background in criminal law and the author of The Legal Basis for a Moral Constitution. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, So explain to people what exactly does the executive order say? Yeah, Trump was incredibly brilliant here. When this news first broke yesterday morning, I was frankly a little bit concerned going, what is going to be the substance of this executive order? But if you actually read it, don't just read all of the people talking about it and the different perspectives. I mean, definitely read some of the good ones, including mine, but definitely read the executive order. And it's titled Affording Congress an Opportunity to Address Family Separation. And that's really all that it is. And so an executive order is just a formalized executive action. So President Trump could have done this just by directing Attorney General Jeff Sessions and um, the Secretary of Defense himself. He could have just done this, but he wanted to tell the American public what he's doing. And all he said is that our policy as the executive branch is to enforce the law. We can't do anything that is over and above what Congress legislates. And that's entirely constitutional. So if you actually read this, all he's saying is we are going to enforce the law and to the extent that is allowed by law and available resources, then we will keep families together. And that's a very good thing. But he's saying Congress and the court system, which is a nod to the Flores case, uh, Flores versus, then that's, that's really the extent that's allowed by law. So this was a brilliant move where he's saying, our hands are tied here. If you don't like this, by the way, Kamala Harris, who said the executive order does nothing. Well, of course it doesn't, because President Trump actually isn't a dictator and he isn't (laughs) acting like one. And this is a good thing. He's saying, Congress, in Article 1, Section 1, you have all legislative authority. This is your job to do something about it. They're begging him to be a dictator, basically. When when Chuck Schumer's shaking that pen at him, he's basically begging him to be a dictator. Now, the, the Wall Street Journal keep saying, oh, this is a new policy. This separating children is a new policy. And the way they write it is very foggy. Uh, They make it sound as if like Trump just invented this idea. Oh, I have a good idea. Let's pull kids away from their uh, from their parents. But that's not right, is it? No, not at all. I mean, this has been an issue that has gone back. I mean, the, the Flores versus Reno, Janet Reno, who was, of course, Bill Clinton's uh, attorney general. This issue and, and immigration generally has been an issue since the founding of our country. And uh, immigration and naturalization is given to Congress to legislate on. But this particular issue goes all the way back to the Clinton administration and that particular settlement in 1997. And so it's amazing to me, Andrew, that this is just suddenly some kind of peak crisis moment right at the same time that the inspector general's report is coming out that shows the bias of the FBI, that shows really, really negatively on Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Now, all of a sudden, it's Trump's fault. And like you said, everyone's saying we want him to act like a dictator, yet he's literally Hitler, who was a dictator, but (laughs) somehow, you know, we're supposed to reconcile the two. They're trying to put him in a no-win situation. And that's why this executive order was so brilliant, because it didn't go outside the line of his actual constitutional authority, but it puts him on record as saying, hey, I'm I'm saying, Congress, you better do something about it. And if Congress doesn't, that will be the problem. Now, the, the order does instruct or ask Jeff Sessions attorney general to go and to the judge who did the florist decision does it not am i wrong about this that he he wants them to try and change the florist decision to give them a little bit more leeway 
Yeah, he he uh, instructed the attorney general in Section E of uh, that last part of the executive order, which, by the way, is only one page. Everyone should read it. Take five minutes out of your day and just read the actual text. And he instructed Attorney General Jeff Sessions to file a request to modify the settlement. That's going in front of uh, Judge G. And this will be a very interesting uh, decision to say, will the judge make a politically activist decision here? Or will uh, this actually be able to modify that agreement, which is where we get the 20-day holding period and allow then the Congress to modify the law and give us more than 20 days where we're holding families together? And, and, so that's a good thing. And it shifts the responsibility for housing people to the Department of Defense. Does that does that get around Flores at all, or is it still the same uh, problem? It, I think it's still the same problem. Yeah. And, um, and and that's where, you know, the, the INS and law enforcement, we have to remember that the executive branch can't legislate. They can't just interpret the law however they want. Yeah. They can't just enforce it however they want. And yet, I mean, that's what Obama's uh, Department of Justice really did. And that's why everyone was so upset about the DREAM Act and DACA specifically, because if we remember what Obama tried to legislate, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, that was supposed to go through Congress. And whether or not we we like that as a policy or disagree with it or not, that can't come through executive action. It can't come through the executive branch. And so Trump is being very wise here by saying, I recognize the limitations of my constitutional authority. We are here just to enforce the law. And this this remains true even if Chuck Schumer shakes a pen at you. you that's what you're telling me, right? It, it, it <laughs> does. I mean, I, I recognize that that's kind of a, you know, a really big uh, let, <laughs> the, the pen, but Trump is holding firm and I'm super excited about that. Jenna, thank you so much for coming on and explaining this to us. I really appreciate it. And I really do want to have you back to discuss your book, The Legal Basis for a Moral Constitution. Jenna Ellis from the James Dobson Family Institute. Thanks a lot, Jenna. Thank you, Andrew. See, this is what this is what I think, because I don't think anybody quite has caught on to the fact that he has now put the Democrats on the line. And he's exposing the fact that they want an open border.